Life Stories Live. Welcome to Life Stories Worldwide. Uh, today we have a, a dear friend of mine that's going to be sharing his life story of what has taken place in his life as a young man into his adult age and now into his life with his family and and uh, again the things that he's doing to make a difference in his community and again he's a dear friend of mine his name is Angel Lopez and Angel I'm just going to turn it over to you if you would just share your life stories with us yeah praise the Lord amen um like brother Bill said my name is Angel Lopez and uh, you know I want to share my story of the power and the grace of God over my life. Well, my life started um, in 2010, you know, graduating from high school, you know, always been a good kid at the time, but a tragedy hit my, my life and my family. You know, I'm, a, I'm the oldest of six brothers. You know, at the time I was 17 years old and I, I had other little brothers before me and it all started in 2010 when I graduated from high school and one of my little brothers was um, trying to be like my other brother. You know, I had a brother that was in and out of juvenile hall, you know, jail, you know, YA, youth authority. So my little brother wanted to chase his footsteps, but he didn't want to chase mine because he thought that my lifestyle was boring because I wanted to do good. So in 2010, um, my little brother started hanging out with the wrong crowd. And, you know, he started hanging out with the gang members that my brother was involved with. So they embraced them and, and, they, and, they, and they, grab, well, they grabbed a hold of him and told them that he was welcome into the gang life because my brother was a gang member at the time. And he was well respected at the moment too. So my little brother started dressing like my brother, walking like my brother, living like my brother. And I remember in 2010 in March, um, I was coming from a soccer practice and I remember my little brother was hanging out with, with a bunch of gang members and they were gonna go retaliate because of something that went wrong in our city in Fallbrook. And I remember that, um, you know, guys from the rival gang came to Fallbrook and, and they did some, you know, some horrible stuff. So the gang, which my brother was a part of, wanted, wanted revenge, they wanted to retaliate. And I remember seeing him that night, it was on Wednesday night in March. And I remember seeing him going to, to, to the neighborhood, what it's called, where they, were, where they were hang out at. And I remember telling him, where are you going? And he would tell me, I'm gonna go to the hood. I'm gonna go retaliate because these men, these people need to pay what they did over here. And I remember telling him at that time, I tell him, you know what? You don't belong in that life. And I'm gonna show you that the life that you're trying to chase is not worth it. It's all a lie. And I remember going with him not thinking anything was gonna happen. But at the time, you know, like I said, I was, a, I was a young kid. I was a good kid. I was scared of getting into trouble. I was scared of the dark. I was scared of fight. I was scared to do anything that would cause any damage towards my life. But I remember going to that place with my little brother, not thinking anything was gonna happen. But I remember that I went and I see a bunch of gang members around him saying and planning what they were gonna do over there to the rival gang. So I don't know what hit my mind thinking, you know what, I'm just gonna go with him. Nothing's gonna happen. He's gonna see that the lifestyle that he's chasing is not worth it. That it's just a lie. It's just something that, you know, that, that, had, that brings no benefit over your life. But that day was the day that, 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 that tragedy hit my, my family and myself. I remember going to that place and next to you know, I just hear gunshots. And I hear gunshots hitting the car. More than 50 times the car got hit. And I remember just my brother bleeding from the face and the head, thinking that it was just a glass the, of the impact of the bullets um, hitting his face. But I didn't think that it was him getting shot. So I remember him yelling, saying, you know what, I got hurt, I got shot. So the first thing that I did as a brother, I, I protected him and I threw him inside the car. And I remember him passing out, you know, and I thought it was because of the pain that he was going through. But later on, I understood what it was because when we took him to the hospital, you know, the gang members dropped me off to the hospital and I see my little brother passing out and the doctors start telling me, you know, he got shot in the face, in the cheek, in the nose, in the neck, and he got shot in his leg also. 
So they had to fly them to the children's hospital. And I remember that day like if it was yesterday because I never thought that anything like that was ever gonna happen to me or my family. Because if my family, you know, was from a working class family, you know, um, you know, my, my mom and dad were workers and I never thought that something like that would ever hit our family, but we didn't know anything about God. We didn't know anything about, uh, you know, the things of God at the moment we tragedy hit. And, and I remember my mother was five months pregnant at the time. So she comes at the place at the hospital and letting me know if something happens to my son, it's going to be your fault. So the air flight to the children's hospital. And I remember going over there and the doctor saying 48 hours are critical. Anything could happen. We just got to wait and see what's going to happen. And I remember that day, like if it was yesterday, my mother being pregnant at the time, you know, waiting for the worst. And my brother dies on Mother's Day. And I remember that, that you know, my brother suffering, you know, for two months and, and he his brain died, you know, he, he was brain dead. So they had to shut him off from the machines and everything. And it was a hard decision because I would see my mother cry at the time. And at that moment, you know, my life changed because I saw the pain that my family was going through. I saw the pain that not only my mother, but my father and everyone around us was going through. But at the moment, all I wanted was revenge. All I wanted was for others to feel what I felt. So I swore that day to my brother and I said, you know what, I'm going to make every mother, every mother, every son go through what we went through. And I remember that day, um, he died on Mother's Day and my life started uh, uh, being a gang member that, that after he died, you know, I was 18 years old and I remember um, my brother, um, I promised my brother that I was going to get revenge. So I ended up going into the gang after graduating from high school, I went to the gang trying to, you know, get revenge, trying to get by, um, retaliation back. And I remember going into the gang and, and I'm meeting my wife at the time was my girlfriend. And I only had four months being with her and the police hit my door. And I remember that, um, you know, I ended up going to prison, uh, me and my brother fighting 28 years for something that we didn't do at the time. But, you know, at the moment we didn't understand, you know, we were going through one loss and me and my other brother going to prison. And I remember while being in prison, um, some lady writes me a letter because my mother at the time was going through it. She was depressed. She wouldn't want to live. She wanted to be in her house sleeping and not living for her life because she thought that she had nothing to live for because she had a son that was dead and she had two kids in prison. And at the time, we didn't know anything about God. We didn't even go to church or anything, but this lady came and started giving Bible studies to my mother, even though my mother didn't want nothing with God because she thought that if there was a God, why would she take her son away from her? Why would her son die? Why were her other kids be in prison? Why did she do, what did she do to deserve all this? And I remember this lady giving her Bible studies and writing me a letter while I was in prison and telling me, you know what, Angel? I don't know what you're going through. Or I don't even know who you are. But what I do know is that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. But at the moment, I, I was angry at the world. At the moment, I was hurt because I understood that I was in a place that was no hope at the time because I saw my mother crying. <laughs>
Life Stories. The press, one dead and another one in prison. So we, our family was a mess. And I remember like Satan just coming over our house and destroying it. At the moment, we had no hope. We had nothing to be able to give us the strength to move forward. But at the time I get out of prison and two years later, I get out of prison. And I remember that I'm coming out to a two year old daughter and to a wife. And I try to live my life normal like everybody else, but I couldn't because things inside of my heart, inside of my mind were tormenting me saying, you don't deserve to live happy. But don't you remember that your brother died? Don't you remember it was all your fault? And I remember, like I remember those thoughts because I couldn't bring any any good memories of my little brother that I had with him because the only memories that I had were bad memories, memories when I used to hit him, when I used to be a bad brother. So it would torment me. It, it would kill me inside because I didn't have the opportunity to tell my brother that I loved him because he wasn't there no more. And I hadn't had that chance to let him know that all I wanted for him was good. And all I wanted him was the best for his life. But now I didn't have that opportunity because he was gone. So I ended up drinking. I ended up doing drugs. I ended up doing whatever I can to forget all those thoughts. And I, and I couldn't find peace because at the time I had my wife, my kids, I had two kids at the time. And I remember little by little, I started losing everything. I remember that I ended up losing little by little my job. I ended up losing my house. I ended up losing my wife. I ended up losing my kids living in the streets, doing whatever I could just to be able to survive, getting strung out on crystal meth, on heroin, doing whatever to forget everything that I was going through. But at the time, I remember after, after I'm trying to live my life and living in the streets, my mom starts going to church. And I remember um, my mom getting out of that bed because she had years being depressed inside that bed on that in that room not, not living not having a reason to live for but I remember she started going to church and my dad at the time had like seven years without drinking because he was an ex-alcoholic but after my mom started going to church seems things seemed to get worse because my dad started drinking again and I remember I would drink with him and, and it was something that why would he start drinking again? But I realized that when things are gonna get better, sometimes they get worse, you know? And I remember that, that, that my, my mom's going to church and I remember my dad getting angry at my mom, getting jealous. And my dad was never a jealous man, but I remember him getting jealous at my mom and, and telling her, where are you going? And my mother telling him, I'm going to church. And my, my dad insulting my mother with bad words that, that you can't even imagine. They didn't hear, no, you're not going to church. You're going to go see someone else. You're cheating on me. You're being infidelity with me. So I'm going to go and see where you're going. And that day, my dad goes to, to church with my mom and my dad gets saved. And I remember my dad being a changed man from never going to church before starting to go to church. And I remember he started being a, a godly man but my life was still the same. But now I had two parents that were praying for me, that were putting my life in God's hands, believing in a miracle that God was, able, was gonna heal me, that God was gonna liberate me from everything that I was going through. And I remember losing my family at the time. I was living in the streets, had no hope, no whatsoever. But I remember one day when, I, when it, was a, a, it was in a night and I remember walking through the streets and I remember coming to a place at four in the morning, coming to a place, and I see these young men outside. I remember these young men telling me, hey, brother, do you want to eat? At the moment, it was shocking for me because I was always a person that, that always would fight if anybody ever told me anything, somebody that would, would always, you know, fix everything with his fist. And I remember, I remember um, these men telling me, hey, are you hungry? And they're, and they're taking me to their house, and they're feeding me a plate of food. And they, and they tell me the same words that I heard when I was in prison. Hey, it's no coincidence, brother, that you're in this place. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. So I start remembering those words that I received from that lady in that letter. Those words that when she told me that she didn't know what I was going through. But what she did know is that she had a plan and a purpose for my life. So I start crying. And these men start praying for me. And I start believing for, and I start believing and I start telling God, you know what, God, if you're real, like they say you're real, help me, help me 
be able to leave everything behind and be able to be free from all this drug addiction. And I remember coming to this place and being able to have an encounter with God at the moment because I was hurt. I lost everything. And I remember staying in that place, praying, because they taught me how to pray. They taught me how to believe in God, regardless of what I was going through, even though if I didn't have anything or if I didn't see God working in my, in my life, but believing that he was going to do something in my life and in my family's life. It took eight months of prayer, you know, and, and, and humbling myself before the Lord and crying and asking him to restore my life and restoring my family. And after eight months, the first time that my wife came, and I remember, you know, because at the moment, you know, my wife wasn't with me for almost three years. And I remember that, that I hurt her so much. And I remember that I did everything you could possibly do to a woman to hurt her. And I used to, you know, humiliate her, tell her all these things that she wasn't worth anything. And I started giving her alcohol and drugs to be able to do my own thing. And I remember that after I wasn't with her, she was falling in the same thing with me. And she was living a life of drug addiction too. But me being in this place, I was believing that not only was God going to restore me, but he was going to restore her life. So I prayed. I prayed. My wife didn't want nothing with me. She didn't want to know anything about me. She was doing her own life. And I remember that she came after eight months to that place where I was at. And I, and I prayed this prayer and I didn't know what I was praying, but I knew it was God through me praying this prayer. And I said, you know what, God? make her fall in love with you more with you than with me. I didn't know what I was saying, but later on I understood that if she loved God more than me, she was going to be able to forgive me. And she did. She fell in love with God. She gave her life to the Lord. She got saved. She restored her, her, her life. She was, God restored my marriage. I ended up coming to the same place with her and, and God started doing miracles in my life. And I started remembering what God, you know, he, he replayed a tape over my life. And I remember that every moment that I was going through hard times, even times of death, he was always there. So I start coming to church and my wife starts coming to church, you know, and our kids, you know, after making them suffer for a while, seeing us get high, get drunk. Um, now they see us loving God, restoring our marriage. Now my um, God give me the privilege to have two more kids. And I remember in that moment, you know, being, being in this place, I remember that God brings me to the place that I hated the most. He brings me to the city of the rival gang that killed my brother. And I come to this church and, and there's something that's blocking my prayer and I feel it. And it was still having that hate towards that person that killed my brother. And, and God has you know, mysterious ways to, to work in your life. And I remember coming to this place, to this church, and I see the family of that person that killed my brother in this church. You know, and, and I tell God, why do you do this to me? Why do you bring me to this place? Why, if you know all the hurt and the pain this person has done to me, why do you bring this person to this place? And I remember this scripture from God saying, you know, if you want the Lord to forgive, you got to forgive those that hurt you. And on that day, I forgave that person. I said, you know what, God, if you forgave me, who am I not to forgive that person? And I forgave that person. So I come to this place and, and God starts healing me. God starts restoring me. God starts giving me a purpose, a calling. And God starts restoring everything what the enemy meant for evil. God brought it for good. And I remember how my family used to be before that tragedy happened. <laughs>
helping others to bring hope, letting them know that if God did it with me, he could do it with anybody else. Because I remember when my family was devastated. I remember when my mother was crying for years, not having a reason to live, but now she had all the reason to live because she met her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because she saw what God did, not only with her, but with her whole family. And I thank God every day because I know that I don't deserve to be here. And I know that that, 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 I heard that before I never knew about God, but now I know him. Now I have a relationship with him. And God gave me the privilege to see my brothers come to the Lord, using me as a vessel so, so they could see that God is real, that, the, that the God does exist, that God still, you know, wants everything with us, regardless of what we do of our past. He still wants to do miracles in our lives. And I thank God for, for, for coming to this place. I ended up coming to a recovery home, a Christian-based recovery home called Victory Outreach. And it's there where God restored my, my, my life. It's there where God restored my marriage. It was there where I was able to see God's hand in my life and my family. And me and my family now have given our life to the Lord to do his ministry, to help those in need. And maybe one day I, those people that were in the same shoes that I am could be able to find hope. And I just want to encourage you. I just want to let you know that if any problem that you might have and you don't find any solution to it, Jesus is the solution to it. Jesus is the answer to everything. And I tell you this because one day I found myself lost, but, but God found me and God mm -hmm. restored me. And, and, and I want to give God all the glory and all the honor for everything he's done in my life. And, and, and I just wanted to share this testimony of the power and grace of God. Thank you very much. Angel. Praise God. That is a, a powerful testimony, a powerful story of what God can do in a man's life and how he continues to use you in the community where we live. And uh, I'm thankful that God has raised up a man like you, Angel and the other brothers that, that love him and know that he loves them. And you have that same desire to help others that are struggling like you and your family did. Um, again, thank you very much, Angel, for, for sharing your life story with us today. And I, I know God's gonna use this to help many people that are out there that are going through a similar situation that you're dealing with. And, um, you know, I'd like to just ask you a few questions myself, being I was at one time a youth pastor in Fallbrook, I, I got to meet a lot of the kids that were running the streets and a lot of the kids that were heading in the wrong direction and always trying to make a difference, inviting them to come in, to take a break and, and share, share uh, the love of God with them when I had the opportunity, and I remember myself when I was a young boy running the streets in New Jersey, how there were a few people that had a relationship with God that made a difference in my life, though it was for a short moment, maybe a quick, brief moment that they were able to get me to slow down and to think. Uh, I believe it had a lot to do with keeping me out of the trouble that so many people get involved with. And uh, I know you're doing that. And I know we wanna make a difference uh, also in, in the community where we both live. Yes. And uh, I know this year, as we share your life stories on the internet, we're gonna target these cities. We're gonna target the, the Vista, California and uh, the Fallbrook, California and Oceanside, California. With, with this life story to, to help people that are struggling with drugs, alcohol, violence, whatever it may be, turmoil that uh, the enemy has brought into their life to destroy them. And uh, I'm so thankful for the ministry in which you're now supervising and overseeing. And um, it's been in my life for 32 years, my wife and I have supported that ministry in the North County community here in Southern California. Yes. And uh, what's a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, ministry to help men and women. So uh, again, uh, in, in, in shutting down or closing at this time, Angel, can I ask you to say a prayer for yes. the family members, 
boys, girls, men, women who are struggling with the, the, the challenges in which you shared. Would you pray for God to help them? Yes. Thank you. Hey. Yes. Um, I just want to share one thing. Um, you know, it all started with somebody praying over me, you know, somebody, you know, did a prayer to, to me when I most needed it, you know, at the moment. And everything changed there, you know, when, when, when they prayed over me, when they lay hands over me. So I want to pray. I want to pray for anybody that's hearing that's going through depression, um, guilt, remorse, or maybe you think that you're not worth it at all. You know, you're worth it because God, you know, paid a high price for us, you know, sent his son for us. So whoever believes in him shall be saved, you know? So let's pray. Father, we give you thanks, Lord. First of all, for your mercy, your grace, your love, Lord. We thank you for everything you've done in our lives, Lord. Father, I pray for those people, my Lord, for every man, for every woman, for every young man and young woman, Lord, that is hearing us through these social platforms, Lord, that I pray that you may captivate their hearts, Lord, that you make, under, make them understand, my God, that the best way is your way, Lord, that there's nothing compared to your love, my God, no one could ever compare to that, Lord. I pray that they may find salvation in you, Lord, that they may trust you, my God, that if they're finding answers, they may find it in you, God. I pray that you bless those young men that are going through drugs, through gang violence, Lord, that you set them free, my God, that you send people to show them about your love and testify about your power, God. Bless those young men and those young women, Lord. Make them know that they're loved, they're worthy, my God, that they are not a disgrace or they are not worth nothing, Lord. I bless those young men and young women, Lord. Let us be a vessel for them like God. And if you if you have been accepted the Lord, I, I want to, you know, say a prayer. If you want to repeat it, the word of God says that if you confess with your mouth and believe it in your heart that he is your Lord is here, you shall be saved. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I believe, my Lord, that you have died for our sins, Lord. Father, I ask forgiveness for our sins, God. And let, it, let your Holy Spirit dwell in our hearts, God, and in our minds, Lord. Forgive us from everything that we've done, Lord. Your word says that if we repent, you are faithful to forgive, God. We bless you in the Jesus name. And we all say, amen. 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 Thank, well, you, thank you very much, Angel.